This is Megapine. Megapine. M I P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Megapine. Get woke. Stop the bombing. Cease fire. Why have we not yet done it? Let us say it loudly and often enough so that the deaf can hear it. Stop the bombing. Sisters and brothers, we gather here today in a march for Gaza. This is not at the expense of any other group. We decry violence. We decry killing of any innocent civilians. Brandy, you good? You good? Dr. King went into this very building in 1965, as early as 1965, to call for a ceasefire in Vietnam. Two years later, he was right here behind us in front of the UN. And you just heard his voice calling for a halt to the bombing and for a ceasefire in Vietnam. We all of us, all of you and all of us are here today to stand where Dr. King stood and to take the same stand he took to call for a halt to the bombing, a halt to the aggression, and for the ceasefire. Everybody say ceasefire. 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 We're going to get right into our program, coming before us first with a few words is the new senior minister of the church that Dr. King actually had a dream of pastoring. Dr. King wanted to teach at Union and pastor this church, but he got called to Montgomery and the rest is history. Please welcome now the senior minister of the Riverside Church the Reverend Adrian Thorne. Good evening, everyone. It's really an honor to be here and to represent Riverside this afternoon. You're going to hear a lot of words, but I'm going to give you a practice. A practice that I believe is healing, both for us and for our siblings in the Holy Land. Because I'm an organizer, I believe in the power of the people. And because I'm a person of faith, I believe in the power of prayer. So we're going to combine the power of the people with the power of prayer. Many of you may know this line from Psalm 46. It says, be still and know that I am God. The experience that we're having here right now can rob us of our humanity, and certainly this experience that our siblings are having in Gaza is robbing them of their humanity. So I invite you right now to put your hands on your heart. We're going to chant the words, be still and know that I am God, to settle ourselves and to send healing energy to our siblings in Gaza and the West Bank. We're going to inhale and on the exhale chant the words, and we'll drop a word every time we breathe, like this. Be still and know that I am God. And we'll inhale. With every inhale and exhale, we'll drop a word. Are you ready? We're sending this prayer to our siblings in Gaza and to remind ourselves of our humanity. Let's inhale together. Be still and know that I am God. Inhale. Be still and know that I am. Inhale. Be still and know that I am. Inhale. Be still and know that. 
inhale. Be still and know. Inhale. Be still. And the last time, sending this prayer to our siblings. Inhale. Be it is my prayer that this prayer reminds us all of our humanity and that this vibration goes out from this place to our siblings in the Holy Land, regardless of religion, regardless of ethnic background. Amen. Thank you. Lise Peterson. Sisters and brothers, thank you to Reverend Thorne. Let me just say something. Uh, to those who are the counter-protesters, we all are here together to say for an end to violence. Let's not be disruptive. Those with us, don't let them distract you. They're here for that purpose. Now, those to my left, if you want an end to the killing of all people, just chill. And just join us. We're not here to hurt anybody. All right? Amen. Here now, Pastor St. Luke, the Luke in Harlem and Faith for Black Lives, the Reverend Stephen Green. Hear ye him. Come on, somebody shout, cease fire now! Cease fire now! Cease fire now! Y'all look good today. Come on, New York, make some noise. We have come today as black leaders, as Palestinians, as Jewish comrades, as people of faith, as people of the land who have come to demand an end to genocide and an end to war. If you believe in a new world, make some noise. There's something we sing in the black church tradition. I want y'all to help us. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Make some noise if you know this is about freedom. This is not about October 7th. We're talking about 1619. We're talking about decades and years of genocide and tyranny and oppression and colonization and imperialism. This is not just about October the 7th. And while we stand with those whose lives have been taken because of the heinous act, we must acknowledge all of the lives that have been taken because of the decades and generations of genocide by the hands of white colonialism, by the hands of imperialism. Make no mistake, from Palestine to Paris, this is a revolutionary moment. This is a moment where the people are straightening up their backs, where we're tired of talking about it, and we're, we're ready to do something about it, to remake this world. So we've come today to call this nation to consciousness. We've come to stand in the very steps that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood in to talk about this deep tradition of love warriors and truth tellers this deep tradition that, that combines the ancestral tradition of those who said, up above my head, I still hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. And when we see the innocent children who have been bombed in Palestine, we remember a young Palestinian Jew by the name of Jesus. We remember the one who told us that, that there was greater inside of us than that was in the world. 
So we've come to be encouraged today to, to dry our tears from our eyes, to let us know that there is still power when we come together as truth tellers, when we come together as people of the land, when we come together to acknowledge a new world, a new vision, a new idea of what this world can be. And we've come to tell the United Nations that if you are unfit to speak truth to power, that we need to abolish the United Nations. What good is a United Nations if you can't commit and c a call a genocide a genocide? What good is it? So we've come today to be encouraged. My dear brothers and sisters, you are not alone. We're all tied together in a single garment of destiny. So President Biden, be on notice. The revolution will not just be televised. It's going to be live streamed. God bless you. I say and amen. All right. All right, Reverend Stephen Green, please welcome, if you would, and let me just stress to all of the speakers, um, two to three minutes, please. Please. All right. Um, we're running on battery power generators, and they don't last more than two hours. So I want everybody to join me and help me do that, all right? Please welcome Imam Sahab Webb. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. al Palestine hurrah! Free, free Palestine. Two minutes. You know, there is a great activist in Ohio, Jemina Akras, one of our great sisters in the Muslim community, who has framed this moment that allows each and every one of you on this side of the street, not that side, this side, to understand that you passed what she called the litmus test of history. If you're here, you stand in the shade of Moses. You stand in the shade of Jesus. You stand in the shade of Muhammad. You stand in the shade of Sojourner Truth. You stand in the shade of Malcolm. You stand in the shade of Martin Luther King Jr. You stand in the shade of truth. And that truth brings us together. What needs to be said in the face of dead children, dead families? I received a phone call two days ago from a member of my community who lost 67 family members. So our message to President Biden is, are you progressive in your politics or are you a progressive genocider? You cannot claim to be for a progressive agenda. You can't say that life matters when life doesn't matter in Gaza. You can't talk about gun control, Cory Booker, when you're too scared to enforce gun control in Khan Yunus. You can't talk about environmental justice when 6,000 bombs have been dropped on Palestine in less than a month. So this is the litmus test for this country, for the United Nations, for people of power. And we come here in the voice of Moses in front of Pharaoh. We come here to speak truth to power. Salaam alaikum. Imam Shahab. Please welcome the CEO and president of the organization that Harry Belafonte founded. In fact, she was his right hand for many years. The Gathering for Justice, the CEO and president, our dear queen sister, Carmen Perez Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, today I stand before you, not just as Carmen Perez Jordan, the president and CEO of the Gathering for Justice, but as a Mexican-American Chicana woman whose family was displaced during Manifest Destiny. I'm here in solidarity with my Palestinian family. I'm also here as a mother of two young children who I am responsible for loving and protecting. And it is with that responsibility that will, I will not be silent while children and babies are dying right before our eyes. 
I am here as a voice echoing the collective heart of every mother, daughter, nurturer across our globe. We are the guardians of tomorrow, the keepers of life's sacred flame, and it is with a heavy but hopeful heart that I address you. It is unnatural for a child's blood to be washed away with their mother's tears. It is wrong for a child's blood to be washed away by their mother's tears. Say it with me. It is wrong for a child's blood to be washed away by their mother's tears. And yet, the soil of Gaza is stained with the tears of mothers who have lost their children. A sorrow no parent should ever endure. The air carries the silent whispers of dreams unfulfilled and lives cut tragically short. It was here where Dr. Martin Luther King stood and called for peace and justice with moral clarity. And today I amplify that call with the spirit fueled by compassion and a vision guided by revolutionary love. An immediate ceasefire in Gaza is not a plea, it is a demand. A demand for the night silence to no longer be broken by the cries of the innocent. For the shadow of oppression to lift and give away to light of hope. We are united in our quest for the siege to end, for the occupation to be addressed, not with the might of arms, but with the strength of justice and power of political will. In a world I dare to envision, our children will play joyfully in their neighborhood playgrounds, not in the deserted streets surrounded by bombed buildings. Today, we are here to make a strong statement. We support a ceasefire in Gaza. We stand for the fundamental rights and dignity of every child, mother, and family affected by this violence. So I invite you, all of you, to join us in this stance. Add your voice to this chorus of change. And in the words, the enduring words of Coretta Scott King, women, if the soul of the nation is to be saved, we must become its soul. Let us reclaim the soul of this nation and rise again to do what's right for our children. Cease fire! Cease fire! Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. And now, the Executive Director of the Arab American Association of New York, Marwa Janini. to stand in 
solidarity for what is right. To be with you all today is to speak the truth that we are here today, that we here today are the ones who stand for peace. And anyone who defies or calls for a ceasefire is complicit in the genocide of the Palestinian people. Over 10,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel in the last month alone. Over 5,000 Palestinian children have been killed. We are here to say enough is enough. Cease fire now. No more siege. No more occupation. Long live Palestine. Let's hear it from Marwa. And now the Senior Minister for Public Theology and Transformation of the Middle Church here in New York, the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Lewis. Good evening, everyone. Our hearts are cracked wide open with bloodshed. Our grief is profound. It pricks our anger and our sorrow and our tears because mothers are burying babies. Grandmothers' arms are empty. And this violence is done in the name of God. We have a violence problem because we've made a God problem. If we think we serve a God who demands death in order for people to have land, if we think we serve a God who guarantees place for some and not for all, if we think we serve a God who answers to our deepest, darkest rages, we are mistaken. Our God is a God of love. Our God is a God of love. Our God, say it, is a God of love. A God of love. A God of love who demands justice, who demands freedom, who demands liberation, who demands place and homeland for all the people. This genocide is not of God. The occupation is not of God. The violence on October 7, I'm sorry, not of God. And violence does not fix violence. The only thing that will end the bloodshed is to end the bloodshed. The only way to stop the violence is to stop the killing. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. In the name of the blood crying for the redemption, and in the name of God whose only name is love, cease fire now. Cease fire now, in the name of love, in the name of God, in the name of love, in the name of fierce love. May it be so, may it be so. Reverend Jacqueline Lewis, we hear now from our dear sister who for quite some time has been a leader to us in keeping us informed on this issue and tying this issue in with all the other issues of oppressed people in the world. She is our leader when it comes to this nation of Palestine, which ought to be an independent nation, respected and not encroached in this way. She is the founder of Empower Change, co-founder of Until Freedom, we all know and love her, Linda Sarsour. today with a broken heart, but a spirit intact. What I understand and what you understand is that my silence will not protect me. Your silence will not protect you. 
Our silence will not protect the Palestinian people. I want you to judge me by my enemies. Our enemies are right-wing Zionists. Our enemies are white supremacists. Our enemies are war profiteers. Our enemies are those who support genocide. Our enemies are those who cover for genocide. Our enemy is this administration that is complicit in the war crimes that are happening in Gaza. I will not be silent. I will not be intimidated. I stand here before you honored and privileged to be a Palestinian American. My parents did not sacrifice and cross oceans for me to be born in the United States of America, for me not to bear the responsibility of speaking up for my beloved people. How many more, how many more dead bodies will be sufficient for those who lust the blood of the Palestinian people? How many more children have to be slaughtered? How many more women and men and elderly have to be slaughtered? You are on the right side of history. 56 years ago, Dr. King came to the spot today to oppose the Vietnam War. People turned their backs on Dr. King. People criminalized Dr. King. People threw Dr. King to the side when he stood against war in this country. So don't worry about what they say about you now. Because in 30 and 40 years, you will look back on this day and when you are asked by your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, where were you when they were slaughtering the children of Palestine? And you will say, I was on the right side. Sisters and brothers, I only have to appeal to your moral humanity. I don't have to incite hate against others. I will not get you fired from your job for speaking the truth. I will not dox you. I will not bully you because you know that we are on the right side. We don't use intimidation tactics to get you to say free Palestine because you know that that is the moral position to take in this moment. The only people who have to bully and intimidate and dox you are those who are on the wrong side of history. Genocide is not self-defense. Genocide is not self-defense. What I want to end with is this. It is not if Palestine will be free. It is inevitable that Palestine will be free. And you will say that you were on the journey with us when it was not convenient. Because if standing up for justice here or justice for Palestinians was convenient, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So keep your head high, your back straight, and know that one day when we all achieve full liberation, those who supported genocide will be in the dustbins of history. We will look at them like we looked at the white supremacists and the Ku Klux Klan that opposed integration of our public schools. We will remember them in the photos when you are on the right side and those who were bloodlusting Palestinian children were on the other side. So we start the work today and we will remember in 2024 each and every one
one of you has a responsibility to ensure that those who go and say they represent us, in fact, represent our values. Nobody will knock on my door in 2024 unless you come to me with an agenda of justice and freedom and equity and yes, freedom for the Palestinian people. Free, free Palestine. 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 Let's hear it for Sister Linda. We all are here in solidarity, but we lift up in prayer and in utter solidarity with those like Linda, whose families are directly, directly affected by what's going on. Let me just level set two so everyone is clear. Right here is the scene of the crime. The only country that will not go on record to support a ceasefire. This is the United States mission to the UN. And so all of you in the mission looking out the window, wondering what's going on, be clear. What you see is what you get. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. We welcome now the co-founder of Faith for Black Lives and pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, my older brother, the Reverend Jamal Brown. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, your presence today is an offense to the U.S. Congress because yesterday they tried to silence our sister for raising her voice. But the representatives of liberty and justice for all are here today. If you believe that freedom should be for everybody, make some noise now. We are here because injustice is here. And the reality is a whole lot of unholy things are happening in the Holy Land. 10,000 people should not be dead today. How dare you call children casualties of greed and they be casualties of genocide. We stand today because we want to remind America that three years ago after George Floyd was killed, you tried to silence us and said that we could not say Black Lives Matter and we should replace it with all lives matter. Well, today, if all lives matter, why don't the 10,000 people who are in Palestine dead, do their lives not matter? If this is the land of the free and the home of the brave, why is Congress and Senate acting like cowards? You cannot be silent and turn a blind eye to what is happening right before our eyes. America is having a problem speaking truth to power because they recognize the blood, the symptoms, and the crime scene. When you talk about apartheid, you got to talk about Montgomery. When you talk about apartheid, you got to talk about Selma. When you talk about apartheid, you got to talk about Michigan and New York and Baltimore and D.C. And it looks a whole lot like Gaza because you are bombing the inner cities with substandard education, bombing inner cities with substandard housing, bombing inner cities with corrupt police officers. The revolution will not be televised. It'll be on TikTok and Instagram to say that a whole generation is now rising up. You cannot be convicted with conscience. And for our brothers and sisters who are declaring the lie that this is the last days. This is not the last days, this is a new beginning. Because all over the world, people are standing up and realizing that freedom should be free for all. And so I challenge those of you who claim to be Christian, stand on the shoulders of Jesus Christ, who said, love your neighbor as yourself. We love you, Palestine. We love the oppressed. We love those who are disenfranchised. And we are reminded that this revolution looks like the Bible. Not the one in Exodus, but the one in Matthew, where they crucified a Palestinian. But he got up in three days and said, power will be to the people. If you believe that power is coming, shout out loud, power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. 
Let's hear it for Reverend Jamal Bryant. Our next speaker has accomplishments too lengthy to name. But I'm going to just tell you something she made happen yesterday. As a co-founder of Untold Freedom, she organized all of us and organized the state of Kentucky to defeat the no good Uncle Tom Attorney General Daniel Cameron, who would not prosecute the killers of Breonna Taylor. He is not the governor because she organized us to go down there and get people out to vote. Daniel Cameron lost. Please welcome, from Until Freedom, our sister, Queen Tamika Mallory. There seems to be some other folks trying to make some noise out here today. So I want to make sure that folks can hear us loud and clear. When I say no justice, you say no peace. No justice. 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 No peace. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it?
because I know for myself. And like Brother Tanahisi Coach said, it is not confusing. It is not complicated. It is straightforward and it is clear. And what is happening today is not okay. I want to be listed with those who stood for freedom and justice everywhere. Not just when it was convenient, not just when it was safe, not just when everybody else did it and I could hide in a crowd. I want to stand out by myself. I am so glad that Stanley and Von Sill Mallory raised a warrior in me. That no matter what they take from me, no matter what they do to me, I will not be afraid that when I see wrong, I'm going to say it. When you get a chance, brothers and sisters, as I close, I want you to go back and read the story in Luke about the Good Samaritan. Because you see, my Christian brothers and sisters, some of them have been the main ones calling me to explain all the reasons why they can't stand up why they can't say anything in this moment. You know who you are. But you see in the story of the Good Samaritan, the man is told by God to love your brother, to do whatever you must do for your brother and sister. And when you see a man robbed or harmed, you stand with them. You go and do that and therefore you can live eternal life. Now I'm not a preacher. There's many here today, but I use that word as inspiration for me because I want to be among those who were good Samaritans. That I do not walk by on the other side of the street when I see wrongdoing. And so some people ask me, well, does that mean that you care about all children? And I say yes. They say, does that mean that you care about Israeli children and Jewish children? And I say, yes. I say loudly, yes. And just as I care about those children, I also care about the children, the white children who were killed in Sandy Hook. I care about the children, the Latino brothers and sisters who were murdered in Uvalde. I care about black and brown brothers and sisters who die on the streets of Chicago, in Atlanta, in Louisville, in Louisiana, and right here in New York City. I care about gun violence, violence, murder, genocide, and ethnic cleansing everywhere. And so when you see me and you ask me, why am I here? I'm here because I must be here. I'm here because there's two roads. I can either be a coward or I can be courageous. And I will never let the history books record that I stood on the sides of cowards. I will be courageous if it takes the last breath in my body. And you brothers and sisters being here today, that is what you are doing. You are being courageous. You are being bold. You are being leaders. You are challenging the system. And you are doing what is right. God bless you. No justice. No peace. Tamika Mallory. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, it, it's gets darker earlier, doesn't it? I think we forgot that. So if you all can kind of do it in shifts, turn your cell phone lights on so everybody can see. Everybody not at once, but if you can do it in shifts, especially those of you up, up close, that would help. Our next speaker is in a, yeah, amen. Our next speaker is an intellectual, a scholar, a theologian, a hip hop artist, and a dear friend, he raised money when I first ran for office for city council in Washington, D.C., and we formed the Black Political Party, the Umoja Party. He came to raise money for me 30 years ago. So the least I can do is support him and what he's doing right now as he runs to be the next president of the United States. Please welcome Dr. Cornell West. Let us be clear, let us not 
not be deceived. We are here because we fundamentally believe that a precious Palestinian baby has the value of any other baby on the globe. And I come from a people for 400 years have been terrorized, traumatized, and hated, and we dish out love warriors and freedom fighters every generation, which means that we stand in solidarity with anybody who's occupied, anybody who's subjugated, anybody who's exploited, and that's why we focus on Gaza at this moment, because a genocidal attack is taking place. 10,000 dead and 4,000 precious children. And don't let anybody tell you that because you love Palestinians and Palestinian babies that you hate somebody else. It just doesn't follow what our brothers We don't hate Jewish brothers. We don't hate Jewish sisters. We don't hate Jewish siblings. We loathe, we hate a vicious Israeli occupation. We loathe and we hate a vicious siege against Gaza. And the least we can do at this moment of overwhelming barbarity is have a ceasefire. And yet you got these cowards in Washington, D.C. talking about a humanitarian pause. Please get off the crack pipe. Wake up. See the humanity of precious Palestinian brothers and sisters. And the American empire has the nerve in this building to veto a humanitarian pause with our precious present Palestinian brothers and sisters being bombed. What kind of country are we? What kind of people are we? And we send a message to Palestinian brothers and sisters and siblings in Gaza, you are not forgotten. We see you. We focus on you. We give attention to you. And it doesn't mean that we're not concerned with our indigenous brothers and sisters here. It doesn't mean we're not concerned with black folk and brown folk. It doesn't mean we're unconcerned with workers. It doesn't mean that we're unconcerned with Jewish brothers and sisters, wherever they are with anti-Jewish hatred. We're not concerned about responding to somebody else. We are bearing witness to the tradition that has been poured into us by those who came before, the Edward Zaids, the Martin Luther King Juniors, the Fannie Lou Hamers, the Ella Bakers, the Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschels, the Dorothy Days, and I'm talking about my mama and my daddy too, Irene and Clifton West. And that's why we're going to stand together. We're going to struggle together. We're going to cry together. We're going to laugh together. We're going to correct each other. But most importantly, we are going to fight genocide. We are going to fight war crimes of any kind. We're going to fight crimes against humanity. And yes, we are going to ensure that Palestinian dignity, Palestinian humanity, Palestinian security is procured. And it will not be secure by any kind of hatred and revenge. No, I stand for what John Coltrane called a love supreme. And a love supreme ain't no joke. It comes from blood and sweat and tears and a refusal to simply respond to hatred with hatred and revenge and revenge. But rather we want freedom. We want liberation. We want to ensure self-determination of all oppressed peoples, no matter what color, what country, what nation, let us stand together and stay strong. Dr. Cordell West, Dr. Cordell West, coming together as a group now, almost a thousand black clergy publish a full-page open letter in the New York Times today demanding the U.S. government 
support a ceasefire. You can all see it there on the New York Times and the New York Times on page A9. Please welcome the person who brought us together. First of all, the co-founder of the Black Church PAC, and executive director of Live Free USA, Pastor Michael McBride, the general secretary of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, the Reverend Dr. Ivor Carruthers, and our elder, one who's been out here along the barricades as long as many of us have been here on the earth, the founder of the House of the Lord Churches, Bishop Herbert Daughtry, hear ye them. Everybody repeat after me, say, I, 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 believe, I believe, I believe that we will win. Come on, say, I, 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 I know, I know that we will win. Right fist up, say, I know that we will win. Come on, say, I know that we will win. If you know what we're clapping up for winners. We got victory on our side. Today in the New York Times, over 900 black Christian faith leaders took out a full page ad calling on President Biden and his cabinet, which includes the U.S. representative to the United Nations, Linda Greenberg, to call for a ceasefire in Gaza in the war between Israel and Hamas. We are here to bear witness that there are black Christian faith leaders in the United States of America who are saying do not engage in genocide, ethnic cleansing with our tax dollars in our name on other poor people across the world. Now I'm gonna read just a quick paragraph of what 900 plus black Christian faith leaders have joined our voices together and invite Dr. Carruthers and our elder, Baba Bishop Daughtry to give us some final remarks, but this is what we said, our conscience and hearts compel us to call for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. We fear unless there is an immediate ceasefire by both Hamas and Israel, the conflict in Gaza will escalate into a regional war resulting in the continued death and injury of countless Palestinian and Israeli civilians, particularly children. We mourn the loss of 1,400 Israeli deaths on the October 7th attack. We mourn the loss of what is reportedly over 10,000 Palestinian civilians, including 4,000 children. Somebody say, shame on us! Shame on us! Killed in Gaza with tax dollars that come from hardworking taxpayers in the United States of America. Somebody say, shame on us. Shame on us. We, the undersigned black Christian faith leaders, implore President Biden to use every leverage available as the president of the United States to call for an immediate bilateral ceasefire in the Middle East for the sake of our shared humanity and collective security. You can read the rest on the web page, but I'm here to tell you today, we will not remain silent in the face of ethnic cleansing of God's children. And if your tongue is tied, you need to ask God to unloose your tongue and speak up for the least of these. And I will also say to my beloved, People, we must denounce barbarity in every form. We cannot be given over to inhumanity. 
because we will need our humanity to finish the cause of liberation in Palestine, in America, in the Congo, in every oppressed place on this earth. And our word to the media is to quit talking with a twisted tongue. Ceasefire is the only way to have a conversation about where we go from here. We are tired of being called inhuman when in fact the inhumanity are those of the empire who are dropping the bombs in our name. No longer we are standing with holy rage to say we demand that you look in the mirror and find your own humanity. Because when you can drop bombs on children, there's something about that that says you are disconnected from the spirit of God. And so we stand here. We will not be quiet. We will not go away. We are standing on the ancestral blood and the vision of those who have gone before. Because we know we will be victorious because we are righteous in the name of God. Ceasefire. Yeah. Ceasefire. Yeah. Ceasefire. Yeah. Well, it has been said that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. were out here. Well, I was with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1967 when he spoke at the Riverside Church. He was against the war then, and I believe that if you were here this evening, right now, he would be against what is happening in Gaza. It has been asked where do you stand? Well, we stand for peace. We stand for ceasefire. We stand for the mothers and the children in Gaza. We stand for the freedom of all people. Now, a few years ago, I used to sit in the UN and I sat with Mandela representative, the ANC. I sat with the PAC. I sat with SWAFO. These were African liberation groups. And guess what? I sat with Arafat. Remember the PLO? And guess what? I didn't see any horns coming out of their heads. What I heard was, we want freedom. It is nonsense to talk of destroying a people when the people are enslaved, are not free. You cannot destroy the revolution. Last week, last week I was in Grenada where Morris Bishop and 19 of his comrades okay. were not, were destroyed, assassinated. I was asked to speak and I said, you can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. You can kill, you can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. And so we were head with peace. I believe that we will win. We have passed, thank you to Pastor McBride, Dr. Carruthers, and Bishop Daughtry. Give them another round of applause. Bishop Daughtry 
stood here in this very space with Dr. King, as he said in 1967, amen? We welcome now, as we represent diversity here, from Jewish Voices for Peace, Elena Stein. Israel purports to speak in the name of all Jews. Well, I am here on behalf of hundreds of thousands of American Jews who say not in our name. Cease fire now. Let Gaza live. Sing with me. Let Gaza live. Let Gaza live. Let Gaza live. Let Gaza live. We are here. We are here with our entire broken hearts, horrified at the Israeli government's genocidal onslaught against the people of Gaza. We are here outraged, outraged at President Biden, at the State Department, at Congress, who dares to fund and fuel and arm these mass atrocities. And to you we say, we, we the organizers who phone banks for you and who canvass for you to ensure your win over your opponent in 2020. Listen to us when we demand, we demand that you stop using Jewish grief and pain to commit mass atrocities against the Palestinian people. We demand a ceasefire now, not a humanitarian pause. What is a pause to genocide? I am here, I am alive because the day that my bubba, my grandmother's entire family was massacred in a genocide, she just happened to be absent. And so I spent years and years agonizing over the question of where were the neighbors? Why did they just stand by? And so it is with all of my Jewish ancestors at my back, the one who survived and all those who didn't, that we say now more profoundly than ever before, we refuse to be neighbors who just stand by. We are organizing right now the largest demonstrations of Jewish people in solidarity with Palestinian people in history. Because while they say it is these people or it is those people, we know what is true, what has always been true and what will always be true, that it is all of us or none of us. And when we say all of us, we mean all of us. We mean Palestinians, we mean Muslims, we mean black folks, we mean trans folks, we mean Jews, we mean poor folks, we mean all of us. This is the future that we are building that they cannot imagine. They cannot understand it. But as we fight this death machine, we get to build, we get to embody, we get to become the thing that we are fighting against. And that is this, that is this gorgeousness, multi-generational, multi-racial communities rooted in life and rooted in love. That is what we are building here today. And in that spirit, in that spirit, I want to say on behalf of all of us, to all Palestinian people who are here right now, who are watching all around the world, to the people of Gaza, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, we are with you! Say it with me! We are with you! We are with you! We are with you! We are with you! Let's hear it for Elena Stein, Jewish Voices for Peace. Hear it outside for a minute in these streets. Now let's hear from the Executive Director of the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, Ahmed Abuzdeh.
Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! My name is Ahmed Abu and I'm here to represent the U.S. campaign for Palestinian rights. We are a network of organizations, organizers, and activists that are fighting right now for a ceasefire and to end all U.S. support of the genocidal state of Israel. Now, I have some words for you all, but I want to remind you to visit uscpr.org. We have resources so that you can call and write letters to your members of Congress. Don't let them say they didn't hear from you. I want to share a piece of a poem with you, and I shared this poem on Saturday in D.C. at the largest protest for Palestine in the history of the U.S. Now this poem is titled Enemy of the Sun, and it was written by Samir al Qasim. For decades, people thought that this poem was authored by Black Panther Party member George Jackson. The poem was discovered in his cell, and we know that the assumption that this poem was written by Black Panther Party member George Jackson tells us that the struggles that we see in Palestine are directly connected to what we've seen here. This country has 400 plus bloody years of history, and this connects us to our people in Palestine. So for Enemy of the Sun, I have chosen my favorite part of this poem to share with you all tonight. And I hope that it will inspire you. You may put out the light in my eyes. You may deprive me of my mother's kiss. You may curse my father and my people. You may distort my history. You may deprive my children of a smile and of life's necessities. You may fool my friends with a borrowed face. You may build walls of hatred around me. You may glue my eyes to humiliations Oh, enemy of the sun, but I shall not compromise! And to the last pulse in my veins, I shall resist! Before I leave you, Pastor Mike already did, I believe that we will win, so I will give you another favorite straight from the Dream Defenders in Florida. I want you to repeat after me, give me every ounce of power in you! Power! Power! Transformation! Transformation! And miracles! And miracles! I want it! I want it! I need it! I need it! I got to have it! I got to have it! Right now! Right now! Right now! Right now! Right now! Right now. Thank you, God bless you, Free Palestine! Thank you, Brother Ahmed. Now renowned hip-hop artist and co-founder of Untold Freedom, my son! No more murder! No more murder! No more genocide! No more genocide! I stand here a fearless black man. I do not fear repercussions of standing on the right side of history. A lot of our black brothers and sisters ask me, why are you in this? This is not our fight. I tell them, anytime we fight against what's wrong is our fight. Any fight against injustice is our fight. Any fight against apartheid is our fight. Any fight against genocide is our fight. That's been our fight for over 400 years, damn it. It's always our fight. Silence is complicity. And they say courage looks like insanity to a coward. And I'm far from a coward. And I know that you are not cowards. And that's why we out here standing. So I say to my community, to my black brothers and sisters, come outside and fight. Because if they come for them in the day, then they gonna come for us tonight. No more genocide! All right, nice. Thank you, brother. We now welcome the senior pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church in Pleasantville, New Jersey, the Reverend Dr. Willie Francois. 
Ceasefire. We are here today because of the shamefulness of the American government. We cannot talk about what is happening in Gaza without putting this at the footsteps of the, of the White House and also the Capitol and also the Pentagon. We are here today because America is addicted to war. America is addicted to militarism. And we, the people, are saying we no longer want the spoiled meat of militarism that America has been trying to feed us. And we will no longer drink the spoiled milk of white supremacy that America thinks it can nurse us on. We are here because we believe in freedom. We believe in freedom even when this country doesn't believe in freedom. This is a nation that is built on stolen land and stolen people. Of course they don't know how to stop genocide when it is founded in genocide. Genocide there is a slow death to the human spirit here. Missiles that are well guided there are a reflection of misguided priorities here. We are here today because we understand that the first casualty of war is the truth. And we are people of the truth who refuse to allow the lies of this government and any other empire to proliferate anymore. This is a call for a ceasefire. This is a call for liberation because liberation is love. This is a call to tell white evangelicals and any other false Christian that there is no theology that is grounded in Jesus that will ever sponsor mass death making. We are people of faith. We are people of conscience and we will not allow genocide to happen in our name. And genocide is happening in Gaza, but it's also happening in Baltimore and in Harlem because it's genocide by incarceration, genocide by miseducation, genocide by incarceration, genocide by food apartheid and healthcare apartheid. And we say no more. You cannot kill people in the name of the people because just Justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Cease fire. Cease fire. Brother Willie Francois, thank you, brother. We welcome now the co founder of Black Voters Matter, Latasha Brown. Continue to be driven by our politics, but our humanity. 
when I say love, you say power. Love. Power. Love. Power. When I say power, you say love. Power. Love. Power. 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 Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Natasha Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1967, another person who was here with Bishop Daughtry and Dr. King was Dick Gregory. We, some of us, common hymnal myself, decided this was a time for another movement song. And we written that song, it's called Cease Fire. You're in for a special treat, here to perform it here live for the first time, is Dick Gregory's youngest daughter, Ayana Gregory. Please welcome her as she comes. Cease Fire.
everybody say, everybody say power. Save God. Everybody say power. Save God. Everybody put one fist in the air. Everybody say power. Save God. Everybody say power. Save God. We will win. I love you. Thank you. My God, Ayanna Gregory, give her a round of applause. Lord have mercy. Power, save Gaza. 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 Cease fire. 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 Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, Ayanna Gregory. Lord have mercy. I just want to remind people that tomorrow is global shutdown day. So shut it down wherever you are. Second of all, just a little bit of history in case you're ever on Jeopardy that Linda and I just acknowledged. These places where we stand, when you walk into that mission, you're on United States property. Right next door is Uganda. That's Uganda's property. And no disrespect to our counter-protesters, we love everybody. But I wonder if they were aware that the early Zionist movement wasn't even trying to be where it is. It was trying to be in Uganda. It's interesting how people pick and choose the land they have a right to. By the way, all of this is Africa. Middle East is not a continent, it's Africa. And so we as African people stand with the Palestinian people, all right? The senior pastor of the Trinity Lutheran Church, the Reverend Dr. Samuel Cruz. Viva Palestina Libre! Liberation to Palestine! Cuando la tiranía es ley, la revolución es orden. When tyranny is law, revolution is order. Let me say this night that I came here with one prayer, but I'm leaving with two prayers. The first one was for the liberation of Palestine. The second one came after I heard a group of people saying over there, kill them all. And I said to myself, oh God, if I ever become so ugly, kill me. It's terrible that people could have such evil in their hearts. Let me begin by pointing out that I think it's important that we keep in mind that the two countries that are perpetuating this genocide on Palestine were both established in the belief that God gave them that land. The problem was that there were people living there already. How could God give you land that belongs to someone else? They started with Canaan and said, that's ours. You are there, but it's ours. And then in the 20th century, they say, now Palestine is ours. Let, it, let us make no mistake. What's happening in Palestine has nothing to do with divine providence. It's genocide. 
And we must fight this fight the fact that is very sad and difficult to witness how many people in this country want to avoid the reality that genocide is happening in Palestine. It's sad that the people who hate those who denied the Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust, want to deny the genocide of the Palestinian people. But I am here today in solidarity with the Palestinian people, and I believe that God would give us the strength to continue to fight until we end this. Thank you all. Y'all all right? Thank you to Dr. Cruz. We're about to wind down. We've got the last group of speakers, and then we're going to have some very specific instructions about what we're going to do next and how we're going to creatively disperse. Yeah. Amen? Y'all yeah. get that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring everybody up here together. They're each going to say a few words. Linda is scripting me that she wants me to say that they are all young black organizers on the cutting edge here in New York. You all know them. Wait a minute. Please welcome as they come. Okay, guys, look on the floor. Sister Nupal is here. Sister Niala Hedera is here from Freedom March NYC. And Wars in the Garden is in the house. Derek and Kiara here and others. Welcome them all. All power to the people. All power to the people. All My name is Nupal Kiazolu. I'm 23 years old. I'm a young black organizer from Brownsville, Brooklyn, and I and I unapologetically stand with the people of Palestine. Although times are bleak right now, and there's a lot of sadness going around in this world, I encourage all of us to keep fighting, to keep going. Do not let this system of white supremacy break your spirit. White supremacy will tell you that there are no solutions to this problem. White supremacy wants us to beat ourselves down and think that we are powerless and we are just looking at our phone screens. But the people have so much more power and it is up to us to realize that and take action. We stand on the shoulders of giants, each and every one of us. None of us would be here if it wasn't for the fight of our ancestors that came before us. So it is up to us now to continue that fight because we are quite literally in a state of emergency. We live in a country that can allocate $14.5 billion to Israel but cannot fund education. We live in a country that can allocate $14.5 billion to Israel, but cannot provide free health care for all. We live in a country that can allocate $14.5 billion to genocide, but cannot pass common sense gun laws. People are living in poverty. People are on the streets. We are suffering. and it is a shame. 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 shame, shame, shame. Don't tell me this country doesn't have enough resources when I see where our money is going. The problem is not that we don't have enough resources or that we lack resources, it's how those funds are allocated that's the problem. And 
to every elected official right now, I hope you are listening to me very carefully and clearly. To every single elected official that supports this apartheid, you will be out of auction office the next election cycle. The West likes to portray what's going on right now as this conflict that is so, so hard to understand. I just recently graduated with a degree in political science, and let me tell you right now, you do not need a degree to understand what is going on right now. I am a black woman in this country, and I empathize with my Palestinian siblings. I empathize with the reality of waking up in fear of being persecuted because of the color of my skin. I empathize being over-policed and underfunded. I empathize with that reality. None of this is rocket science. The people in Palestine live in a segregated society. It is occupied. That is not something that's rocket science to understand and comprehend, is it? No. So for the black people right now who think this isn't our fight, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is. Our struggles for liberation are absolutely interconnected. And for the powers that are used to oppress the black and Palestinian people, they are also connected. The United States sends police forces, and specifically since we're in New York, the NYPD, they send them to Israel, those terrorists, the police officers. They send police officers to Israel to be trained and to learn the same tactics they use to brutalize Palestinian people and they bring it back here to the United States to brutalize black people as well. I'm not scared of being quote unquote canceled if that means I'm standing on the right side of history. So I say all of this to say that we will not be free until everyone is free. We must understand that our struggle is interconnected and we must work in a framework that centers all marginalized peoples, but specifically right now, we're talking about Palestinian people and we're talking about the struggle for liberation all across this world. And lastly, before I end, I do want to bring attention to my African brothers and sisters right now in the Congo, in Sudan. They too are experiencing a genocide that has been happening for years, just like this one, and in, in, in regards to it not being a new situ a situation or occurrence because this United States of America likes to act like this conflict started on October 7th. No, it's been going on for over 75 years. The conflict in Sudan and the Congo has been going on for years. Millions of lives have been lost and they deserve our support and our voices as well. All power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people. Thank you.
But we know that being drenched in the blood of the oppressed is nothing new for America. Because the American government has been swimming in the blood of enslaved Africans and the indigenous people of this land for centuries. As a descendant of enslaved African people, I know what genocide looks like. But I am thankful that I'm free, unbiased, and unbought. So I can stand and say, free Palestine and long live the Antifada. I absolutely, I absolutely and unequivocally refuse to call for a humanitarian pause. We will accept nothing less than a complete ceasefire. Anti 
anti-racist, without being anti-militarism, anti-imperialism, anti-US war machine. We must never, never become numb to the way the U.S. imperialist war machine dehumanizes, destroys, and destructs every single part of our globe that it touches. We must say no and not in our names. I am here to say, as Viet Tan Nguyen says, the greatest acts of anti-Asian violence are carried out in America's wars in Asia since the beginning of the America as we know it to be today. When we say end Asian hate, we know that is impossible without a free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. A free Palestine. Cease fire, cease fire. Yo, what's good, New York? I'm D-Rec with Warriors in the Garden. We're a collective here in New York City. And we're fired up. We won't stop until they stop. Repeat after me. We won't stop until they stop. 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 We know, black people, we know, we know what settler colonialism looks like. We know what racism looks like. We know what a two-tier apartheid system looks like. And we don't need propaganda and the media to tell us. We have seen this all before. Tools of surveillance, militarized police forces, demonized freedom fighters, this all looks and sounds very familiar. Young people, Gen Z, millennials, we have witnessed the ravages of 9-11 and how our own government actively gaslit us and our parents and our community. We know how racism, anti-Muslim sentiment and Islamophobia is ingrained in this nation. And we will continue to call it out every single time. They thought that we had become numb, that we had forgotten their corruption, but we remember and we say never again. We know and we remember the violence. We know who the real warmongers are, and we will hold this government and Israel's government accountable. And to my gay LGBTQ brothers and sisters, I see you. This is your fight too, baby. This is your fight too. Because you all know dehumanization. You know what it feels like to not be seen as a person. 
You know the powers of propaganda too. My Latinx Asian brothers and sisters, you know discrimination. You know open air prisons. You know the power of border walls, but you also know the power of the human spirit. Tear down the wall. Tear down the wall. Tear down the wall. Liberation and self-determination is non-negotiable. It is not up for conversation, and we will get what is ours. This is a litmus test, just like it was for Malcolm, just like it was for Angela, just like it was for Huey. And if you're scared now to say what's right, are we truly in community? Are you truly in community if you cannot stand up for those who are oppressed, even if you think your freedom isn't intertwined? This is not a moment, this is a movement. Black, brown, white, Asian, straight, fat, young, old, we won't stop until they stop. 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 Let's see it for these young people. All right, everybody good? Yeah. All right, here are our instructions. First of all, any members of the press still down here on the front row? They need to get out? You good? All right. They left. <laughs> <laughs> Ran them off, scared them off. All right, so, you know, I know a lot of you probably came down here via the subway. Uh, we gotta go back to the subway. So we might as well go back to the subway and make a little noise like we're already doing, right? It's just like... We might as well go back to Grand Central. All right, we're going this way. Line on up. Let's go. Be careful. We need to open that up a little bit. To get people out safely. Every night I'm feeling traumatized. They say occupation trying to hide that it's a genocide. We're going in order. I just wish a kid could grow up to see his mama. I wish that I could do something about bombs dropped on Gaza. Hurt so bad to know. Where do my tax dollars go?
there. Do not take on the characteristics of your oppressor. The oppressor is vengeful. The oppressor is hateful. You are not hateful people. You are committed to liberation and justice for all. We don't gotta do what the opposition does. We don't use the words of the opposition because we have a liberation language that includes all people. They exclude, we include. So when you go home tonight, they have their little people all around the city. Trust me, I know them, I got a radar for them. You think they're your people, do you think they're ordinary people? Trust me when I tell you they are everywhere. They're on your college campus, they're outside the supermarket, they're outside Grand Central Station. So stay focused and do not be distracted by the opposition. So, I want you to go in peace and wake up tomorrow committed to doing and acting in justice. So good night, be safe, get home, and we'll see you again tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and every other day. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister or brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand. And above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love. And please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.